when you begin to operate as an intercessor, establishing an altar to interface with the invisible realm, one of the things you are hunting for is to capture, is to compel God to give you a promise. I'm going to explain why. Number one is what? Promise. Let him give you a promise. Number two thing that you are hunting for, the Bible says, and to remember his holy covenant. You see, he will perform the mercy promised our fathers. If God has given you a promise, he will perform it. So if you have a promise from God, just like I do, and I will we'll have a practical session of eight minutes at the end of my teaching. Let me manifest one promise that I have from God. I was doing my own business. I was doing my own thing. I was okay. Somewhere in northern Nigeria, in the core northern aspect of Nigeria. And we were in a meeting like this. And the praise and worship session was as powerful as the one we had tonight. And when I came to church and I began to flow with the rhythm of the Spirit, my eyes were opened and I saw beyond the roof of the building. I saw myself in heaven. I will not tell you what I saw in heaven. But if you are so interested, let me give you one idea. In heaven, I was not a small man. In heaven, I was a big man. Yes. So let me stop that one. But I saw myself in heaven. And that vision was held before my face for like 15 minutes. I saw Jesus in heaven. And when Jesus was coming, everybody laid down on the ground. So when, and in fact, he's coming. What announced his coming was a great light. Where we were was full of light. But what announced the coming of Jesus was a great light. And as we saw that light coming, everybody laid on the ground and covered his eyes. So you could hear his, the sound of his feet as it came closer and closer. And he stopped over my head. And I saw that he was wearing brown sandals. Then he asked me to stand up. So I stood up. And there were eight people, eight, seven other people, me inclusive, eight, that were standing before that vision left. And I could recognize all those people. Some of them have lived in other generations, but I recognize all of them. Then I came back to the place where we were having praise and worship. And then the angel whispered to me a message from Jesus. Take my presence and power to the peoples of the world. That was a covenant that God gave me. That I have the authority to take his presence and what? His power to the peoples of the world. So if I want to go for a meeting now, I just take a fast and I begin to pray. I said, I was sitting on my own. And you came and told me that I should take your presence and your power to the peoples of the world. So that covenant he made with me is a basis of consistent demand. Do you understand that? So as you practice your life around the altar, you are a hunter. The first thing you are hunting for is for a promise from God. You get that? Yes, sir. <laughs> Hallelujah. These are, these, are, these are deep matters. The second thing you are hunting from God is you are hunting for a personal covenant. So what he gave me was a personal covenant. I can also tell you times when he gave me a promise. As long as you have a promise, God will perform it. As long as you have a covenant, God will remember it. Exactly. Don't be distracted. You have reached a day of great joy when 
you trap a promise from God. Number two, what's the second thing you are hoping to trap? A covenant. Someone might ask me, what is the difference between a promise and a covenant? Who is asking that one? I'm the one that asked. It's not you. I'm the one. All right, go to the next verse. Meanwhile, I'm going to show you the difference. The oath which is swear unto our father Abraham. The third thing that you are hunting for is an oath. Because sometimes God swears. Hallelujah. Can you give the, give the evangelist a mic? Let us interview him. You know, when we are talking about issues of priesthood, any man that practices these matters has an experience that we can draw from. Evangelist, what made you feel that God was sending you to Brazil? Give us the account. You don't need to stand up. Okay. Uh, actually, I am this kind of person that... Ah, you are going far. You are going far. Go straight. What did you hear from God that convinced you okay, said, that you are a missionary? He to said to me, the, I will send you... I will send you... Like I sent Joseph. Like I sent Joseph? To help his brethren to help his brethren in a territory of a strange language in a territory of a strange language and wait he, wait wait i want to benefit from your story are you there god meets a man were you a youth copper then or you were working then i was working then he was he's a civil engineer for your information and he was working on site his hope as a civil engineer was that he should hit a major contract that will keep him busy for a very long time and money will be flowing. But while he was on site, God spoke to him and said, I will send you like I sent Joseph to a people of a strange language. What's the name of that language? Portuguese. Portuguese. Before you went to Brazil, did you even know that there was a language called uh, Okay, never... you didn't know that there was a language called Portuguese. And God was sending someone that does not know anything about the language that is spoken among those people. And the evidence that God sent him to those people is that God miraculously made him begin to speak Portuguese. Is that true? In 24 hours. In 24 hours. What was the... Listen, listen. You are, not, you are not following. Listen. What happened before you started speaking Portuguese? I was to go for a meeting. He was to go for a meeting? In the northern part of Brazil. In and the normally, northern part? I, yes. I, I, I go with an interpreter. He goes with an interpreter. Because I don't know anything in Portuguese. Okay. So by midnight, the interpreter called me and said he was not going. There was now, so his interpreter night. disappointed him by midnight. The pastor called me and said, just appear, so that it will not look as if we, we can't, uh, it was a scam. So the pastor wanted to preserve his integrity. So he said, you just come. And shout hallelujah. So when you come, you shout hallelujah, shout hallelujah, shout hallelujah, because that's the best you can do under the circumstances. The pastor cannot understand English, he cannot interpret. So you just come and provide evidence that I did not, it's not a scam. So when I went... The Holy Spirit said, you will preach in Portuguese. Now, wait. Do you realize that this supernatural manifestation is occasioned on a covenant? You want to do business with the spirit being? Hunt for a commitment from that being in form of a promise, in form of a covenant, in form of an oath. I will show you some matters. As I preach in English, translating, interpreting Portuguese, okay. Jesus' power is superpower. Poder de Jesus é poder super. The power of God will conquer the power of the devil. 
O poder de Deus vai vencer o poder do diabo. This is an evil man. Wait, you are not. <laughs> What you have seen is supernatural. When I went to Brazil, he was interpreting for me. <laughs> yes. So he had preached in... But I hope you know, some of you understand your language so well, but you cannot interpret in your language. So he had spoken Portuguese to a level that he was not interpreting. He was my interpreter when we went to Brazil. What is happening here is the commitment of a spirit being. So when you hunt, hunt for a commitment from the Holy Ghost in form of a promise, in form of a covenant, in form of an oath. So I'm telling you that I have a covenant. And this covenant guarantees that I can invoke the presence of God. I can call it. And the presence of God will come. I'm not saying tomorrow. Today, I will invoke the presence of God. If the presence of God comes down, one of the things that will suffer most from the manifestation of the presence of God is if somebody has any instrument from the kingdom of darkness. That instrument will suffer in the face of <laughs> the Holy Ghost. And what I'm telling you, I know it nationally and internationally. I've seen wizards from the underworld that came to challenge me. I've seen witches, they gathered and they were cursing me in their language. Curse. I allowed them to curse for, for some time so that they will, it, it will be on record that they, they did something. Then I cast out all the spirits from all the people. Cause, because I have power to do that from Jesus by covenant. Are you there? So what a spiritual man can do is based on the covenants that he has secured from the Holy Ghost. If we bring you on the scene now, what your prayer can do, what your preaching can do, what your administration can do is based on the covenants that you have secured. So we hunt for promises. We hunt for covenants. And I need to show you the difference between a promise and a covenant. Are you still with me? I'm talking about the manifestation of the supervising spirit of your order. The way to profit from the presence of that spirit is to press into him enough for him to give you what? A promise, a covenant, or to make an oath with him. Because God, God can swear sometimes. Is that correct? 